are you doing, kid? You just gonna sit on your butt all day watching YouTube videos? You gotta get up there. You're just gonna sit around waiting for the PlayStation 5 to drop? Get out there. Go get it. Today we're working on the square back. We're going to be welding up the extra trim holes and covering any bare metal with epoxy primer using the new paint rig setup. Just to fill you in, I've insulated the garage door during the week and also replaced a bunch of seals. I also got this temperature gauge slash humidity meter that's going to tell me how cold it's actually getting at night because hopefully I want to keep the garage above 50 degrees while the primer is curing. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. enjoying this video consider liking and subscribing to follow along with the build and maybe get some motivation for your own project back to the show all right welds are ground down everything looks good it's a few days later actually um, I tried to fool you by wearing the same clothes I fired up the air compressor we're gonna set up this thermometer and see if we can keep it warm enough to paint in here Really, heat is going to be the struggle. It's been getting to freezing temperatures at night, so what I did is I picked up this propane heater, and hopefully if I crack the doors, I can run this before painting, bring it outside, shut it off, paint, and then bring it back in for a little bit and run it with the doors open. The thing is, it's a propane heater, so you can't run it in a closed space, so I have to have doors cracked. Basically, I can get the garage back up the temp and then hopefully my little space heater and my work lights will be warm enough to keep the material I painted warm. I've used the work lights before and they actually work pretty well. They put out a lot of heat and if I'm working on a small item, I can definitely keep that warm. It feels like just a few weeks ago, I was trying to cool down the garage. Now I'm trying to warm it up. The good news is the insulation is gonna help either way, so that's gonna be good all year round. Let's set up the thermometer, set up the heater, and then maybe get this panel washed and get some primer on it. Let's get to it. All right, I just got batteries in the thermometer. This is gonna tell me the high and the low temperatures over the last 36 hours. It's also gonna show me the high and low humidity during that time as well. And I did a quick search online just to be sure. It looks like 85% or less humidity is good and 50 to 90 degrees is a good temperature. I feel like we should be able to achieve that. I mean, fingers crossed, I wanna be able to achieve that without too much hassle. Like I said, it has been pretty cold, but I think with a little bit of work on my end, I think we can stay within that range. Heater 
is assembled. I'm getting ready to fire it up, but I got a little bit confused. It looks like it totally looks like there is a piezo electric ignition system on it, but I couldn't find the starter switch. And then I looked in the directions and it turns out it's just part of the tip over safety mechanism, but it looks exactly like an electric ignition. That had me baffled for a second. I'm just gonna light it with my torch and hopefully this thing fires up and we get some good heat out of it and we stay safe with keeping the garage door open. I can't stress that enough. Don't run one of these in a closed space because that won't be good for you. <laughs> All right, let's try to fire it up. Wow, this thing puts out a lot of heat. I think this is gonna work great as long as I crack the garage doors and don't paint while this is running. It should be relatively safe to use. It should help heat this place up. And uh, it could be a game changer because I was a little worried about being able to even lay down primer in this cold weather. I'm feeling a little more optimistic. Yeah, I don't know, it works. I'm gonna shut it off. We'll pick back up when we're ready to lay down primer. It's a few days later and I have some really good news. Without even heating up the garage, the temperature hasn't dropped below 50 degrees. So it's been getting into the low to mid 30s outside. Pretty confident that if I put a little bit of heat into the garage, I shouldn't be dropping below 50, at least unless it gets crazy cold for some reason. So that's a relief. If you remember, I don't wanna let it drop below 50 degrees because that's not ideal for paint. Today I got my panel prep materials out. We're gonna be prepping at least the rear fenders and then running through a quick primer deal. Uh, today is almost like a test run. I'm not gonna do a bunch of primer. I just kinda of wanna try out the new setup and cover up some of the bare metal on the rear fenders. That's a good one to start with. Prep on these things is at least 80% of the work. I don't know what they say, but it's a lot of the work. Even though I'm only covering up these tiny little spots, I'm gonna to have to prep a lot of the panel if I want it to blend in nicely. I don't want to just hard tape off around those spots because I'm going to have to knock it down anyways with sandpaper later. Let's prep the panels and then get some primer on them. panels with warm soapy water to get them nice and clean. Next thing I want to do is scuff them down so we get good mechanical adhesion for the primer. If my panels were super dirty, I would have started the process using this bug and tar remover to get the worst greasy stuff off of it. In most places you would use a wax and grease remover, but California doesn't allow for that. So basically we have it rebranded as bug and tar remover. My local paint guy let me know about this. After I scuff down the panels, I'm gonna use the last three products. I learned this from the Kevin Tetz video series, so shout out Kevin Tetz. I'm gonna start with this really cheap glass cleaner. This is like $2 a can. I guess it's good for getting off fingerprints and any acidic stuff. Next, I remove to my regular surface prep that I got from the local paint store, and that gets the bulk of any other garbage off of the panel. Next. I'm gonna wipe it down with alcohol and that just kind of finalizes getting any junk off the panel. And it also works as a anti-static. So if there's any static buildup, it's gonna remove that and then less garbage is gonna get pulled into the paint. I got this 99.9% .9 alcohol for really cheap at the hardware store. I just need to dilute it down to about 70% with some distilled water. Let me go get some water real quick. I got my distilled water. 
I'll be able to dilute the alcohol as much as I need to. So after I do all of that, the last thing I would do is just run a tack rag over it, and then we should be good for laying down primer. And as you can probably tell, it's a ton of prep work just to paint any amount of area. So in the future, it pays to do a lot of priming at once. Today, I really just want to cover up any bare metal and run through the new rig to test it out. Let's get to it. is finally prepped after using a bunch of cleaning products. A couple of things I want to mention. One thing, I was just using cheap shop towels today because it was just a primer coat, but really what they recommend using are these lint-free cloths. They're kind of expensive, so I'm saving them for base coat and clear coat. Today, the cheap towels were fine. When you're using the degreaser, make sure you spray it onto a towel, wipe that towel on the panel, and then wipe it off with another clean towel. Because if you accidentally oversaturate it by spraying it under the panel, the panel might feel kind of greasy afterwards and that's not gonna be a good surface for paint. And that's definitely happened to me before with the degreaser. When I first got it, I was feeling that the panel was like greasy afterwards, which is not good. That's not the surface you wanna paint on. Panels are prepped. I prepped both rear fenders. I got my paint out, I'm about to mix that up. I wanted to show you the spray gun I'm using. I'm just using this cheap Harbor Freight gun. And part of the reason I'm using this is that the small detail gun doesn't require a high volume of air. So I can actually run it pretty easily off of my 60 gallon tank. The larger one requires a lot more, so you're gonna need a lot more air for it. I don't think I can do the entire car with the detail gun, but for primer, it's actually fine for doing these small spots. I think I'm gonna heat up the garage, mix up my paint, then shut off the water heater, get the heater out of here, make it safe, and lay down this primer. good that was kind of a stupid amount of prep just to cover up a little tiny spot I really just wanted to cover up those welds that I ground down the other day but it looks good now I also just wanted to try out the setup at the new place and go through the whole process compressor seemed to work well I was able to shut off the water heater and the regular heater I'm just finishing airing out the garage and then I'm gonna fire up my propane heater for a little bit just to get the temp up we're at 54 degrees right now, so I don't want to let it drop below 50. If I fire that up in a little bit, I should be okay. Let me pull off this masking tape and get that going. looks great. I was able to keep the garage in the 60s last night despite the fact 
that it was literally freezing outside. Last night, as you guys saw, I got the temp up with the propane heater and then I closed everything up and I was only keeping it warm with my little space heater and my halogen work lights. But that was enough to keep it in the 60s in the middle of the night because I came and checked really, really late last night. The coldest it got was 52 degrees right after I painted and right before I fired up the propane heater. The propane heater did a great job getting it up into the 60s and then this stuff helped keep it warm in here. Everything looks really good. What I'm gonna do now is go around the car with blue tape and mark everything that needs to be covered with primer. Then I'm just gonna clean it up and get it covered. good, the garage is warm enough, I think we can call it a wrap. As always, I believe in you, get to wrenching. Peace. Uh, what are you doing? Waiting for the PlayStation 5 to drop? Get out there. Get him. Go get it. <laughs>